So in today's video I'd like to talk to you about a common red blood cell parameter called the packed cell volume. Now the packed cell volume is very similar to the hematocrit. Uh, the only difference really is, is that the packed cell volume is measured by a manual or let's at least say a semi-manual method and the hematocrit as explained before is done fully automated these days in an instrument that can measure red blood cells. Now I would really advise you to look again at the video on the hematocrit but basically we said that a machine will determine the number of red blood cells and the mean cell volume and if you multiply this you get a total red blood cell volume and if you divide it by the total blood volume and you turn this into a percentage you got a hematocrit in percentage. Now the packed cell volume is very similar but the method is very different and I'm going to explain that to you now. So let's start with what we are trying to do. So what we want to determine is what is called the red blood cell mass which will give us an indication of the oxygen carrying capacity of the blood as well as its viscosity, how thick the blood is. If the red blood cell mass is decreased then the patient has anemia. Therefore the packed cell volume is a very good or simple screening test for anemia and if it is increased then we usually say the patient has polycythemia. But this is not as simple as that and we will discuss this in the video as we go along. So what are we going to do? Well, firstly, I want you to just think with me for a minute to understand what we are trying to, to get here. So if we take a, let's say a bucket of blood, okay, so we're going to just draw a little bucket there and we will fill it with blood. In a normal adult, a bucket of bucket containing all the blood in the body will have about five liters of blood in there. Now inside this bucket will be red blood cells, there will be white blood cells, some platelets and also some plasma. And when we put all of these together that will give us the total blood volume. And with a packed cell volume we want to determine what fraction of the total blood volume is made up of red blood cells. And this can be done very simple, simply by using capillary tubes filled with blood and I will show you how we do that. So here is our capillary tube, it is filled with blood and the next thing we're going to do is centrifuge it. So which basically means that the sample will be spinned for a couple of minutes at very high speed and then this, after centrifugation our tube will look something like this. So now we can see that after centrifugation our tube shows a number of different layers. At the top uh, there is plasma. In the middle part uh, this is our buffy coat and those of you who've watched the video on the buffy coat will remember that it contains white blood cells and platelets and then at the bottom we have our red blood cells. So now we can very simply determine what fraction of this total is made up of red blood cells and all we have to do now is just literally measure the total length of the tube from the bottom of the the red blood cell column, let's just draw a line there, to the top of the plasma column and we can take this distance here, so let's just draw a line to show the distance here and that will represent our total blood volume and if we should then take this distance, basically there, from just below the buffy coat to the bottom of the red blood cell layer, that represents our red blood cell volume. And this fraction is basically our packed cell volume. Now normally in men this is about 0.45, there's obviously a range, so let's just say that's for men, and in females 
it's around about 0 0.40. Now, looking at this, we can see that the fraction of red blood cells of the total can tell us if there is too many red blood cells or too little. So if this layer would be very low, this red blood cell part, and the packed cell volume decreased, let's quickly draw it here at the top. So if our packed cell volume is low, then we say the patient has anemia. And when the packed cell volume is high, then we say there may be polycythemia. And why do I say maybe? Well, maybe because you will see here that this fraction is determined also by the amount of plasma. So let's say for instance your patient is dehydrated, then the plasma volume will be low. Now the plasma volume makes up part of this total, as we showed here, red cells, white cells, platelet and plasma makes up the total blood volume. So if the plasma volume is decreased, this will be decreased and simple mathematics then tells us that the packed cell volume will now be relatively increased, even though the red blood cells have stayed the same. Now, obviously, the reverse may also be true for anemia. If the patient is overhydrated, for instance, and has received too much fluids, then the plasma compartment may be increased, and then you may have a falsely decreased packed cell volume. Now, there are also some other interesting factors that I just want to bring to your attention that you must consider when doing a packed cell volume. Firstly, a packed cell volume more than 0 0.6 almost always tells us that there is polycythemia. And if you see a packed cell volume over 0 0.6, you have to find a cause. Secondly, there may be other factors that could influence this value. Now, we said that this is a packed cell volume. The piece is for packed. And the reason why that is, is when we centrifuge the tube, the red cells were spun out and packed on top of each other. But oftentimes, some other cells may get trapped in between. For instance, some of the white blood cells may get trapped here. And that, well, the number is usually so small that it would have very little influence. But there are occasions when quite a bit of plasma could be trapped here. So let's just draw some plasma in here to show that plasma can be trapped. And this often happens when you have abnormally shaped red blood cells. Either red blood cells that are macrocytic, too big, or microcytic, too small, or with strange shapes, such as this one here. And this is a common cause, or an important cause as well, of plasma trapping with sickle cell anemia, very abnormally shaped cells. Another interesting factor here is that during the centrifugation process, uh, red cells may become dehydrated and thus become a little bit smaller. So let's just, next to the centrifuge here, we're going to say become a bit smaller. And then this compartment with all the red cells packed on top of each other may also be smaller. In addition, it seems that whether the red cells are oxygenated or deoxygenated, let's just say without oxygen, will also change the size of the blood cell a little bit, which may affect the packed uh, cell volume. Lastly, always look carefully at your lines that you measure from between the buffy coat and the red cell layer. And also look at your sealant that this hasn't cre crept into the red cell layer and that you find the exact place to make your measurement there as well. So that is the packed cell volume. In summary, our simple screening test uh, to determine whether a patient has anemia or polycythemia, but do not forget that the plasma volume may affect your final result.